the Xbox Series S is kind of on fire right now for all the right reasons. I mean, back when this console was announced, it was kind of scoffed at by the hardcore crowd of gamers, and even today it still is. But the fact remains that as long as Microsoft keeps making it, it keeps selling like crazy. At $300, it's no mystery why it keeps flying off the shelves, but is it really a viable option for next-gen console gaming in 2022? when we're seeing games only get bigger and more detailed every year. How does it perform? Are the visuals up to snuff? And who is this console really made for? Well, I've been using this console for just over a year at this point, and I'll have answers to all of that in today's video. So let's get right into it. At $300, the Xbox Series S is certainly the most affordable next-gen console you can buy today. Obviously, it's a cut-down version of its big brother, the Xbox Series X. It's rocking an 8-core AMD Zen 2 APU that packs a small but powerful 4 teraflops of graphical computing power. And if you don't care for all of that, let's just say it's slightly less powerful than an Xbox One X graphically, but over twice as powerful in terms of its CPU. This is why you might see a game run at 4K 30fps on an Xbox One X and maybe 1440p or 1080p at 60fps on a Series S. On top of this, it's got a 512GB SSD for super fast load times, but because of the operating system, it really only allows for 364GB to actually store games on. And of course, it cuts out the disk drive that you would be getting on the Series X, and it does all of this to maintain its ridiculously small size and honestly, I can't emphasize how small this console is. I really can't. I remember when it was announced as the smallest Xbox ever, so I kind of expected it to be compact, but it's actually insane when you have it in front of you. I'll be sure to include some pictures to try and give you a sense of the scale of this small console. And now that we've got the somewhat technical aspect out of the way for this console, I can begin to answer the questions I posed in the intro. Is it a viable option for next-gen console gaming in 2022? Honestly, I think it is, and I'll give my reasoning for this, and of course I'll be expanding on it even further later in the video, but to keep it brief up front, for the people who just want the yes or no answer, I'll say yes. And it's a lot to do with the fact that we're only two years into this generation, and it's a much slower than normal two years into a console gen, considering the things that are going on in the world that's affecting everything from the development of the games all the way to the manufacturing of the consoles. For me personally, this first two years of this ninth generation of gaming feels like the first eight or nine months of any other generation. We've got a ways to go until we can actually see what these consoles are capable of on both sides, and the Series S especially. I mean, it has all sorts of features that aren't being used right now. We haven't seen Fidelity FX Super Resolution used on a wide scale at all this generation, they barely tapped into this velocity architecture that Microsoft has been touting ever since the consoles were announced. I really think we're in for a long generation this time around, and the Series S has a long way to go until it hits its full potential. So you're probably asking, well, how does the console perform? I can say from my experience that 60fps does seem to generally be the standard for Series S at this point. Of course, you've got plenty of games that will do 120fps, and you've got a few games on the opposite end that stick to that very familiar 30 FPS from previous generation. And I will give a quick example for each one. I know Halo Infinite runs at 120 FPS on Series S after its latest update, and I also know that even after the next-gen patch for Cyberpunk 2077, the Series S is still only offering a 30 FPS mode. But for the most part, anything that you can play at 60 FPS on Xbox Series X will be available to play at 60 FPS on the Series S. Not to mention the fact that there's tons of old games that either have been FPS boosted to 60 FPS, like Watch Dogs 1 and 2, Dead Space 2 and 3, Fallout 3 and New Vegas, the Gears of War series, and a ton more. In fact, there's even games like GTA 4 that originally had an unlocked frame rate that stuck to around the 30 FPS area on Xbox 360, but thanks to the raw power of the Series S, it just brute forces itself to a nearly locked 60 FPS. And since we're talking about old games, I think it's kind of important that I cover one of the key features for any Xbox system, and that's a top-tier backwards compatibility system. As of right now, I count about 
580 backwards compatible Xbox 360 games and just over 110 original Xbox games. And of course that's not counting the thousands of Xbox One games that run on the Series S as well. The Series S has really lived up to the goal I had for it, which was just to be a backwards compatibility machine. It plays these games often at much higher frame rates than they originally were, or at the very least a much more stable frame rate than it originally was. And on top of that, you get the next gen benefits like Auto HDR to give these games a bit of a visual boost, as well as quick resume so you can hop from one game to another very seamlessly. So if you're looking for a console to tackle your Xbox backlog with, the Series S is definitely a great choice. But the other question I posed in the intro was, are the visuals up to snuff? And this is something that's really difficult to answer because I've played games that look absolutely incredible on the Series S. I think the best example for that is something like Forza Horizon 5, which looks fantastic, even in performance mode at 60 FPS on the Series S. But then you've got a game like Metro Exodus that looks great, but it's also a really blurry picture because of the super low resolution it's rendering at. I'd say that really the biggest factor when it comes to visuals on the Series S is the lower resolution. You see, you have these games that have pretty good graphical settings on the Series S, but the resolution is pretty much cut in half or sometimes even lower than half of its Series X counterpart. I'll say that anything first party is almost guaranteed to be at least 1080p. There are a few exceptions. I know Halo Infinite's 120 FPS mode is around the 900p range on Series S, but things like Forza Horizon 5, Sea of Thieves, Doom Eternal, Gears 5, Hellblade, and all that stuff runs at a minimum 1080p. The issue really is when you get to the third party games, because sometimes they look great and other times they can be very low resolution. Like the Metro Exodus example I used earlier is a game that drops down to sub 600p at times on the Series S. It's certainly not ideal, but even with the drop in resolution, you're still typically getting that 60fps gameplay. So the answer to this question is really up to you. Are you okay with some third party games targeting much lower resolutions on the Series S? If so, then the visuals will be completely fine for you. But before I move on to the next thing, I also wanted to mention the value proposition of this console because I think that's a very good reason to buy this console. I can't state it enough. This console is only $300. You can't find a better price to performance ratio than this console. There is no PC you can build today for $300 that will outperform this console. If you were to try and build a new PC today, it would cost just over $300 just to get an equivalent CPU to what is in the Series S. In fact, I'm going to build my own Series S equivalent PC right now on the video, and I'll have it playing on screen for you here, just to show you how ridiculous the prices can get. And you can see in the video, in order to build a PC that is roughly equivalent to a Series S, it costs nearly a thousand dollars. And that's not taking into account that the GPU I picked doesn't have any RDNA 2 features like the Series S, and the fact that the SSD I chose is, and I cannot stress this enough, way slower than what's in the Series S. At $300, you're getting what is easily the best deal in gaming, and when you couple that with an Xbox Game Pass subscription, it really just becomes a no-brainer. So who is this console for? I'd say that if you know for a fact you want a Series X at some point, I'd say wait to get one when it's available. But if you're someone who's currently on an Xbox One S, or maybe a PS4, and you want to upgrade but you really don't care about 4K resolutions and super high texture details, then I'd say that the Series S is definitely for you. And what's great is that if you're coming from an Xbox One S or a One X, then you'll feel right at home with the console's UI as it's pretty much the same across both current and last generation Xboxes. And hey, maybe you're thinking about the Series S not for you but for a family member. Maybe you've got a kid who wants to get into gaming or an older family member who's been asking questions about gaming or maybe you're a college student trying to save a bit of money. I think the Series S is absolutely perfect in cases like this. All in all, the Xbox Series S is a fantastic console with a lot to offer, and it's all fit nicely into a very compact form factor. It looks super sleek, it's honestly probably one of my favorite looking consoles ever, and it's able to pack a serious punch when it comes to next-gen gaming. But leave a comment below and let me know if you've got any questions about the console. I'd be more than happy to help you if I can with any information you may need. But I want to thank you for checking out the review today, and I'd very much appreciate it if you could leave a like if you liked the video. And please remember to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell if you enjoy gaming content and want to stay up to date on all my latest videos. But like I said, 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.